second building, that's for sure. Um, but, you know, it's an exciting time here, obviously. Uh, Thank Dan has done the last couple of years. And, and uh, with the leadership of Scott Strickland, AD. Um, obviously, this building, which uh, really helps and promotes football, um, the things that's going on in the stadium. So uh, it's, it's a good time, and I'm happy to be back. Now, you coached, obviously, against MSC when you're at Kentucky, uh, being permanent opponent. So what did you notice the year by year with, with this program and its growth? Well, I mean, it, it really didn't surprise me where it was going. Um, I knew when I left, it was a good group of guys coming in, and each year they were working to get better. And, you know, uh, Dan had done a tremendous job of, uh, and they're doing the transition between Coach Groom and him, maintaining the commitments. So all of those guys I knew. I uh, had a chance to coach a lot of those, those defensive linemen um, Dan's first year, my last year here. But, you know, in the state of Mississippi, you got great athletes, you got really good football, um, and, and it's a unique situation. That, and it's not like most of the universe where you got to go out of state, you can stay in state and recruit. And that, that's a built in bonus right there. So I, I think the sky's the limit. How different philosophy wise and personnel wise or is the situation you're walking into now than when you left in 09? I mean, it just seems like philosophy wise, the state wants to do a lot of different, a little bit more different things than when you were here. Well, you know, I don't know if I can answer that question just from the outside looking in. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of like I said, it's, it's, everybody's excited. Um, when you when you build a building like this, it says it's a commitment. Uh, there's a lot of excitement around the program. You sit over there and look at Davis Wade and what they're doing now. Uh, so I, I think it speaks volumes of the leadership here um, and, and the passion of the fans um, and, and the program. And I uh, when you take all three of those things and, and everybody's pulling in the same direction, you know, who knows what you can accomplish. Hey, I guess you've got to talk a little bit now with Jeff Collins and what have you learned from him and what uh, you know, y'all are going to be trying to accomplish? Well, number one, we want to play great defense. Um, I don't know if I have to say anything other than that. You know, Jeff's an uh, outstanding coach. Uh, I've talked to guys that he's worked for. You know, a lot of people think and, and any time you have a, a coach leaving and a coach coming in where the head coach is doing research on the coaches that he's interviewing, I'm doing research on the coaches that, uh, that are here. You know, um, Jeff I didn't know. I knew of him. I had met him doing recruiting some, we kind of ran into each other. But uh, a lot of people had nothing but good things to say about him. Uh, Tony Hughes, who, who was here when I was here before, I knew. Um, there's a familiar face. I know we got a, I guess he hired. Uh, we, can't, we can't officially announce okay, it yet, well, but everybody knows. I guess he's hired a corner coach. Um, and uh, you guys probably know him. So, uh, <laughs> but, but, uh, you know, if, it, if I didn't think it was a good fit, I probably wouldn't have done it. Uh, and the thing is, my wife reminded me of this. I said how much fun I had coaching him before with the kid. That, that really kind of pushed me over the edge. How do you compliment what Jeff wants to do, X's and O's wise? Because you, know, you would think the scheme would change a little bit to what he want, wants to do. Um, how do you feel like you compliment that the way you coach well, up front? You know, I, I don't, I don't know if we can answer that now. We hadn't, you know, sat down, and it's not like we're getting ready to go into spring ball and right. start hammering out the package and what we want to do. You know, you, you play some four down, you play some three down. The day's offenses are constantly changing. You have to change with it. Um, you know, hopefully, I bring something to the table that that prove helpful for us and, and play good defense. I have a tremendous amount of respect for Chris Wilson um, and the job he did here before that man that he had. So, you know, hopefully we can just improve. The thing I think, the most important thing is you take good athletes and hopefully put them in a position to be successful and let them play where they're not, not thinking a whole lot. And that way they can play and uh, play fast. So, you know, whatever it is we decide on this Mississippi State's defense, and, and we're going to do the best we can to get it going. What do you know about this group of linemen you have? All the young, promising looking guys like Boy Evans, Nick James, uh, Ryan Brown, those guys. Well, I uh, hadn't had a chance to meet those guys. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Quay, I remember that uh, um, when he was a, a sophomore, uh, one of the top linemen in, in down in Morton, so I knew of him. Um, you know, there's a few faces around us for me. Jordan Washington, I recruited. Uh, Curtis Burgess, I know a lot. Caleb Hughes, uh, Preston Brown, some of the guys I know from recruiting. Uh, but I hadn't had a chance to sit down with those guys yet, and I wanna, I, I'm excited to do that and, and kind of, you know, introduce myself to them, and they introduce themselves to me, and everybody starts with a clean slate. And, Let's get ready to go to work. David, hey, talk about development of Junior College Premier McFay when you when you first got him and the progression he's made to where he is now. Well, 
to me, Pernell was a little unique. He, he was a kid that I think played two years of high school football. He was like everybody else, thought he was a basketball player. Uh, gained, I think, 50 or 60 pounds between uh, his senior year and when he first enrolled here. Um, you know, Pernell, the, the thing about him, he had a great attitude and was a tremendous worker. And those are the things you really look for, especially, I, I probably should say more so when you're talking junior college because you know you're only going to have those guys two, maybe maybe three years. So uh, he had had that quality, those qualities, which I love, hard worker, a guy that, that takes the coaching, coachable, a team player. And, and sometimes, you know, quite frankly, you guys know when you're dealing with junior college guys, they got to they have their own agenda. And he didn't come in here with any agenda. He just wanted to work hard, did whatever you asked him to do. And you knew that his best football was ahead of him. And, uh, you know, I was fortunate to have, a, have the opportunity to coach his first year here and, and be around him. And, and really, he really surprised me after being here that first year. Um, and the thing that probably the most surprised him was how the other kids gravitated to him. Uh, he pulled guys, and, and that's unusual for guys just coming in, and then you have guys that's been in the program and they kind of gravitate, but I think it was his work, work ethic, uh, how he went about his business, he handled his business, um, and he, he do what you tell him to do. And, uh, it was fun coaching him that year. I really missed coaching him his last year, but it was, it really, I consider myself lucky to have the opportunity to coach him. I'm sure not a lot of time between now and signing day, but how much are you looking forward to not just this month, but going in the future, recruiting the state of Mississippi again and be able to get, get in on some kids? Well, um, like I said, there's a lot of talent here. And, um, I'm excited about it. We do a good job at home being an in-state, and we should be okay. Um, you know, it's going to be a whirlwind tour for me the next next three weeks through the end of this month. And then we try to get ready for spring ball, so it's not going to be a whole lot of dead time, um, which is good. But uh, I, I'm excited. I'm excited to be back in the state. A lot of a lot of friends I had before, they could text, call, um, everything. And, and everybody seemed excited, so hopefully I can keep them excited. David, you clearly were first, Last question. first year head coach Dan Mullins. I'm curious during the interview process if there was any changes in Dan Mullins. <laughs> well, I, I, don't, I don't, you know, I think like any head coach, you know, after, the, after a year or two, you kind of grow into the position. I know Dan has matured as a head coach. Um, you know, other than that, I think. He understands the demands of the position a whole lot better. I think he handles it a whole lot better. I think he, um, he's, he's done a good job of getting guys around him to, to handle the, the football part, so to speak. But it's like any, you talk to any head coach, you know, they don't ever have enough time for football because of all, all the other obligations. But, uh, you know, Dan, Dan has matured into the position. There's no question about that. And I, I would like to think I'm better. You know, after three years of being gone and coming back, I'm not the same coach, and hopefully, hopefully better. So, um, you know, hopefully we all working, like I said, working for the same goals and all. That's to get this program as high as we can take it.